I'm recording this lesson because I also have a fourth hour statistics class, and they need to uh, have something to do, and I won't be there to instruct. So they'll be able to have this uh, sheet, and as I go over the front page, they'll be able to do the next page. Um, so uh, the first question is, and uh, I say review because technically you've seen some of these things back in uh, uh, ninth grade. Uh, do you necessarily remember them? I don't know, but uh, we're going to give them a try. How many ways can you arrange five different people in line? I did. <laughs> Suppose that we had um, five people. We had person number one, person number two, person number three, person four, and person number five. Even odds. Okay, yeah, you could say evens first, odds second, all sorts of stuff like that. But notice that like, you could take person two and put them in front, right? It is. It's five factorial. Yep. I remember that. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, right. So let's let's talk about how, how we get that. You could also put person number three in front, right? The idea is that and you can see then when you change like second place and all sorts of that stuff. There, there there's a lot of different ways to do that, right? So suppose I have five people. So you can you can think this through. I have five people. Okay. How many different people can I choose to be in the first spot? Five. Now, whoever I choose is in that first spot, how many different people can I choose to be in the second spot? Four. Four. Because the, I, I have one of them that's already in place. Yeah. Now I have two people in place. How many different people can I choose to be in the next spot? Three. Three. And in the next spot, Three. two. And the next spot, one. This is known as what we call five factorial. Factorial is an exclamation point that sits after a number, okay? And it tells us to multiply all those things up. So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 120. Okay. Jim has a coin and he has a die. What are the odds that he flips a head and he rolls a six, that both of those things happen. Okay? Um, flip, flip ahead, what are the odds? 50-50. 50-50. Okay. So flips ahead is one out of two. How about rolls a six? How many different combinations are there when you roll a die? If it's six-sided. Yeah. So it's six. So it's how many, how many, so what is the odds of rolling a six? One out of six. So one out of 12 are the odds that he both flips ahead and rolls a die. Is the next question actually the exact same one? No, there's or instead of and. Mm -hmm. Oh, good question. So now instead of flips ahead and rolls a six, he flips ahead or he rolls a six. Either one of them happen. A little bit different scenario, right? Talk about the person next to you. See if you can figure out what we do in this situation. No, I just need that first one. Are you right in the wrong spot? No. Okay. I don't remember any of the from That was cool. That was cool. Yeah. Hey, you go. Most of those jumpers are out of lead. Oh, I have one. Can you supply them some lines? I can supply them. Okay, does everybody agree that these are the possible things that happen? That he rolls a one and um, flips the tails, or rolls a two and flips the tails, roll a three and flips the tails, four and flips the tails, five and flips the tails, six and flips the tail, or one and flips the head, two and flips the head, three and flips the head, four and flips the head, five and flips the head, six and flips the head. Does everybody agree that, that there's no other outcome other than those that I've listed? Those are the outcomes, okay? So if those are the outcomes, 
circle the ones that involve either flipping a head or rolling a six. That set is flipping a head, correct? And this one is also rolling a six. So how many give you a positive outcome? Seven out of how many? 12. There are three types of crust, two types of sauce, and five different toppings at a pizza place. How many different one topping pizzas can be made? Talk to the person next to you, see if you can figure out how many different you can make. What would you do? Oh. Morning. Morning. This is referencing the fundamental accounting principle is if you have all these different options, you simply multiply them together. Three types of crust, so three times two types of sauce times two. Five different toppings times five, and I get out of that. There are 30 different pizzas that can be made. There's a 40% chance of rain tomorrow. There's an 80% chance of rain on the next day. What is the chance that it rains on both days? We take our 40%, which is four out of 10. And we multiply by our 80%, which is 8 out of 10. And we get 32 out of 100, or 32% chance that it rains on both days. Try number six on your own. What is the chance that it's dry on both days? Chance that it's dry. I believe in you, Maddie. You can do it. Uh -huh. Yes, you're strong. There's a 6 out of 10 chance that it is dry on the first date. Everybody agree? And there's a 2 out of 10 chance that it is dry on the second day. Multiply those together and you get 12 out of 100, which is 12%. So why don't these add to 100? What are they accounting for? It might rain on... One day, One day, but not the other. That's that's the other difference. Okay. Consider the word hearts. How many ways can you arrange the letters in that word? Let's rearrange the letters. Maddie, what letter do you want to go first? Um, T. T. Eric, what letter do you want to go second? Uh, S. S. Ben, third? Uh, R. R. Sydney? E. E. Michaela? H. H. So then our last one is going to be A. Doesn't spell a word, but we we you know reordered it, right? How many options did uh, Michaela have for choosing her last letter? Or how many options did I have for choosing the last letter? One. One. That's all I had. How many options did we have for choosing this second to last letter? Two. Two. Is this like a problem we've already done? Yep. Which problem? The first one, how many things are we arranging? Six. six. So this is six factorial, which is 720. Is this like an exclamation point kind of? It is an exclamation point, exactly. Consider the number 4,125. How many numbers can be made from those digits? Assuming that we want a four-digit number. So we want to maintain a four-digit number, OK? Yes, exactly. Not, so you have four factorial. Are we, is there going to be like a thing that we had, or do we just write four factorial? 
Four factorial? How do you and figure out the number? So yeah. it's four times three times two times one. So four times three is 12 times two, 24 times one is 24. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Tom rolls two die. What are the odds that he rolls a sum of 10? There are 36 possible outcomes when you roll two die. How many ways can add up to 10? See if you can figure out how many ways you can roll a die to make it add up to 10. Quick talk with the person next to you. How many ways can you roll it to add up to 10? Think about it. The first die could be a 6, and the second die be a 4. The first die could be a 5, and the second die could be a 5. Or the first die could be a 4, and the second die could be a 6. There are how many ways to roll 10? There are three ways to roll 10. So 3 out of, there's a total of 36 options, because 6 times 6 is 36. And so 3 out of 36 is simply 1 out of 12. Got a 1 in 12 chance of rolling a 10. Flip it over. Tom rolls two die. What are the odds that he rolls a seven? See if you can figure this one out on your own. You saw me do that example. What are the odds that he rolls a seven? Roll one and a six or a six and a one. You can roll a two and a five or a five and a two. You can roll three and a four or a four and a three. That means a total of six options out of thirty-six or a one and six chance. One and six chance. There's a bag of three apples, four oranges, and five pears. What are the odds of selecting an apple followed by a pear? No replacement. So what that means is in that uh, in that bag that we have, we have three apples, and we have four oranges, and we have five pears. Okay? That's what we've got. So let's start with that first bag. What are the odds of selecting an apple in that first situation? Three out of 12. Or one out of four. Now we've got a new bag because we didn't put the apple back in, did we? So what does my new bag look like? Two, out of two apples, four oranges, and five pears. So this is followed by a pear. So now we're selecting a pear. What are the odds of selecting a pear out of that bag? Five out of 11. So when we have these events that happen multiple, uh, multiple events in order, uh, we are uh, multiplying the probabilities. So one out of four times five out of 11 is five out of 44, five out of 44 chance. What are the odds of selecting an apple followed by a pear, but you did in fact put the apple back in? Well, Obviously, it stays one out of four for the first one. But the second one, there's not 11 pieces of fruit in there. There's now, there's 12 pieces of fruit in there. Okay, and how many pairs are in that grouping of 12? Five. So the odds are five out of 48. 
Oh, but an, oh, and then an orange. I'm sorry. I didn't read the whole problem. Thank you, Sydney. And then we have an orange. And an orange would be what? 4 out of 12, or otherwise known as 1 out of 3. So as you multiply these together, on top, you're going to get a 5. And on bottom, you get 4 times 3 is 12, times 12 more is a 144. Please do the number 13 on your own. What are the odds of selecting three oranges in a row? No replacement, so you don't put it back in after you select it. So you figure out the odds of selecting an orange three times in a row, no replacement. I have a 1 in 72 chance. It says the odds of selecting an orange right away, there are four oranges in a total of 12. Yes? Oh, I'm sorry. I totally messed this up. I did as though there was replacement. Then it's three out of 11, and then two out of 10. Sorry about that. Yep, four out of 12, three out of 11, two out of 10. Is that better? Okay, so you multiply the tops and you get um, 24. And what do you get when you multiply the bottom? 12 times 11 times 10. 1,320. And you could reduce that. Uh, both those are divisible by 2, right? 660. So you get 12 out of 660. Both of them are divisible by 2 again, aren't they? 6 out of 330, both are divisible by 2 again, you get 3 out of 165. You can get it down to 1 out of 55. 1 out of what? And then those are divisible by 3, and we get 1 out of 55. 1 in a 55 chance. What are the odds of not selecting a pair? three times in a row, no replacement. So you're gonna reach in and you just don't wanna grab a pair, okay? No replacement, so you don't put it back. So you can figure that out. Seven out of 12 in your first step, right? Your next step, one of these is gone. We only have 11 left. And there will be then six choices that you could not choose a pair. And then the next one, there will be only 10 left. And there will be five choices that would not give you a pair. You multiply all that out. 7 times 6 times 5, what would you get for the top? 210. 210. And on the bottom? 1320. If you ever want to see a good way to reduce a fraction on your calculator, you can just hit this 
And if you do 210, and you go divided by 1320, and you hit math, convert to fraction, this will put it in simplest form for you, so 7 out of 44. A number is chosen at random between 1 and 16. Eric, give me a number between 1 and 16. Uh, 12. 12. Max, give me a number between 1 and 16. 10. Elijah. 2. River. 7. What are the odds that that number is closer to 16 than it is to 4? It's kind of a tough question, isn't it? And sometimes the best way to go about these problems are simply just to mark them out. So I'm going to mark the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. That it's closer to 16 than it is to 4. Closer to 16 than it is to 4. Okay? So, first of all, if we randomly select, select a number between 1 and 16, how many total choices do we have? We have 16. Is the number 1 closer to 16 than it is to 4? No. 2? No. 3? No. 4? No. 5? No. How about 6? 7? Eight, nine, ten. Ten is exactly in the middle, isn't it? So is it closer? It's not closer. It's the same distance. But once you get to 11, now they are closer to 16 than they are to 4. So how many numbers are closer to 16 than they are to 4? It's like there's six numbers, six out of 16 or three out of eight. Just two problems left here. Sandy has seven classes, good for Sandy. How many different ways could she schedule or arrange her schedule? How many different combinations could she have? Does this look like a problem we've seen before? Seven factorial. Number of different ways you could arrange your classes. Seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. We don't have to multiply by that 1. And we get, as you said, 5,040 options. Ooh, wow. Just think about that. When our school goes and makes schedules for next year, how many different options there are not just for kids, but uh, for all the kids in, in all the classes. Sandy now has choices. Her first hours are locked in. First four hours are locked in. However, she has a choice between two music classes. For a fifth hour, a science or math class for sixth hour, a study hall, welding, or photography for seventh hour. How many different schedules should, could she possibly have? How many choices does she have for Fifth hour. Two. two. How many choices does she have for sixth hour? Two. two. And how many choices does she have for seventh hour? Three. Three. So now we multiply those out, and we have 12. We can't change the order because that's they just have to fall in uh, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Okay. There you go. So that's the uh, first piece. You guys can go ahead and work on that second piece. The problem should fall uh, very, very similar to exactly what you just did. Okay.